Home games, away games, games on the moon, it don't matter. We gotta win all of them. Lift off. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for The Eagle has landed. Happy 2019. Welcome back. Welcome everyone. back to Layup Line. Um, Julian, do you have a New Year's resolution? Um, let's go try to read more books. Mm, that's good. Which is actually, I think, doable. Yeah. Getting off to a pretty good start. I'm trying to read less books. Okay. I read one. Maybe you, well, you gave me one of your books. Oh, yeah. Book of read. Basketball. So you got to get the more books you can get out of your house. Yeah, the better. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I, 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 might buy a, I might buy a bookshelf. Um, so we. I have a question for the listeners. You guys can answer this for me. Do you get the flu from the flu shot? I, the, I, I mean, I... Do, is that true? Like, I don't... Because I'm, I'm feeling wonky so today. So tweet, tweet at Kyle if you know. Yeah, I, tweet. I think that people have, but I think that it's like a less bad version of the flu. I think getting a flu shot is still a net positive in terms of well, it's kind of getting stupid. the flu or so not. It's kind of stupid. I take cough medicine, it doesn't give me a cough. Yeah, but that's not a vaccine. I Vaccines know, I know, I know, I know. Inject the... Um, I had my first Dead physical in like five years yesterday, so I feel healthy. I, Everything's did, good. Did it make you feel healthier or did well, it just make you more confident? It's in actually your own kind health? of it's kind of a frustrating process because not frustrating, but like it makes you nervous because they send you tests right. to your email, like, hey, you have new tests awaiting you and your my chart or whatever. And then yeah. like so I was getting like tests at like midnight last night that were just automated. It's like, oh, the and doctors like, are up way well, late at night, like cracking the code. I was like, oh my God, what's, <laughs> and it's like your cholesterol test. I'm like, oh goodness gracious, what is my cholesterol? Everything's good. Good to hear. I think. Um, there is one thing on my, uh, my chart. It says x-ray on my lungs. I don't remember ever getting an x-ray on my lungs. Well, they, that was, I don't know, man. Yeah. So, um, well, here we are. Uh, just, we're, we're happy. It, obviously, a, a lot has happened since we've last talked. Yes, uh, it's been a really big couple days. Um, I, you know, I I was just say, telling Kyle, I we did this interview with Leitner, Christian Leitner, which will be later on the pod. Great interview. We did it last week, um, and it feels like that interview happened six or seven months ago. Yeah, maybe it's just, it's just been a crazy week, and and a lot of good things, some other things. Um, but uh, it's it's been a heck of a week to be a Timberwolves fan. Yeah. So a quick recap in case you. I don't know where you would be, but if well, you, our boss is in our boss? Uh, Malaysia. Yeah, or, no, Sri Lanka. He's in Sri Lanka. So that's true. Um, and and he, he didn't know any of this. He for didn't a know any of the news. Uh, <laughs> uh, Eric Nelson, shout out to you. Have have fun on your honeymoon, man. Um, but uh, you know, on Sunday night after after the Wolves beat the Lakers, uh, the Timberwolves relieved Tom Thibodeau of his duties as president of basketball operations and head coach. Um, you know, without getting too much into that, because you know we want to respect Tom as much as we can. And the thing with Tom is you're not going to find a guy that worked harder. No. And that was evident from the very beginning. And, um, you know, and, and Tom did have a personal side to him. I think everybody sees the coach who's yelling on the sidelines, but like, you know, he had his moments where you oh, know, yeah. he's a nice guy. Totally. Um, and you never want anybody to ever lose their job. So, uh, obviously, you know, we, we respect Tom and, and, you know, thanks to him for everything he's done. If you look at, um, you know what what he did, and I think it's easy to look at on the basketball court. But you you look at he goes up to thirty one wins, and then forty seven wins, and um, you know snaps a playoff streak for the team. And uh, you, you look at some of the other moves; it's like they they get Josh Kogi, and um, you know the, the trade for Jimmy Butler, which obviously didn't work out. But then to make the trade again, and he kind of came out maybe the best he could have yeah. out of that out of a really tough situation. And now we're seeing in Philadelphia they're having some issues as well. So. Um, I mean, you just look at the Wolves and where they are now as a franchise and where we expect to be as a franchise, and we expect to be competing for the playoffs. We expect to be a winning franchise, and we are that because of Tom Thibodeau. Like, Tom Thibodeau, he changed the the character of the team in a lot yeah. of ways, and he did a really good job. And I remember, um, I, I read something a few years ago. I remember, like, when Scott, Scott Skiles was the coach, like, the Magic uh-huh. and the uh, Bucks, and I'm not comparing those two at all. I think Tibbs is a much better coach, but... Um, I remember reading something saying that, like Scott Skiles wouldn't be the coach for the future, but he was the coach for that. He was a perfect coach for that stretch. Yeah. Um, and you know, and that's it's business, and that's kind of how it works. Right. So uh, we wish nothing but the best for Tibbs. He'll find another job. He's totally. too hardworking and talented not to. 
But uh, the team hires Ryan Saunders, who we all know and love as, as the interim coach. And, man, you know, and he's 32 years old. He's the youngest coach in the league and the youngest coach since, like, I would have to – I mean, the youngest coach to win a game since, like, 1978 or something like that. Yeah. Um, crazy stat. And obviously last night is was an exhilarating win. We don't want to go too much into time depending on when you listen to this podcast. But um, – Ryan's one of those guys, and I've got to know him through the years. Uh, I, I remember, I don't even know if this is appropriate, but it must have been like two or three years ago we were on the Timberwolves caravan. It was me, uh, you know, a bunch of Wolf staffers, Corey Brewer, or uh, uh, Cole Aldridge was on it, uh-huh. um, Shabazz Muhammad, Ryan Saunders was on it. And I remember I had to pee so bad on the, in the caravan. We were going to like Austin, Minnesota, or yeah. maybe we are going like from Austin to Duluth, I remember. And I had to pee so bad. And I asked the bus driver if he would pull over for me. And then after I sat back down, Ryan would go back up and he told the bus driver, he's like, no, he's, he just told me he's fine. You don't have to pull over. So we pass all these exits and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I have to pee so bad. So I went up there again and I go, Hey, can we pull over just to, you know, at the next exit? So I sit back down. I don't, and I don't notice right, Ryan yeah, doing yeah, this. Yeah. So then Ryan goes back up a few minutes later and just goes, Hey, we, we, we're good. He doesn't need to pee anymore. And I heard him that time. And it was just like he winked at me and we smiled and whatever. And, you know, the caravan's one of those things where you get to know these guys. You go to ease and, and whatnot. Um, and that's just kind of the, the – he's very approachable. Uh, before the games, he, he's an assistant coach. <laughs> it's kind of a crazy thing for him to do, though. Like, did you get to pee? How does this story I did get is, to is, pee. Is, is I, did, I didn't pee my pants. <laughs> okay. But, like, that was kind of the thing. Like <laughs> – yeah, th- that that was kind of the thing. Yeah, um, yeah, which which was funny. So, uh, but before games, I've I've sat and talked to Ryan, um, you know, a, a few times, right? And and he always gives gives us a hard time. He goes, "You guys ever going to put anything good on on the on Timberwolves dot com?" He asked us that. He asked us at that as as his press conference. <laughs> um, but and I hate to get into the narrative of talking about his dad because Ryan's his own person and yeah. and he does like his what he does is what he does. It's not what his dad does, but you can't help but see the similarities between him and his father when it comes to how they treat people yep. and um, how the players respect them. I mean, yeah. we even saw last night, uh, Jeff T gets thrown out of the game um, and, you know, say, <laughs> I, I mean, Dennis, Dennis Schroeder, I think, uh, started that, but we won't get into that. But uh, then Wiggins and Schroeder get into it and who's the first one on the court? It's Ryan right. Saunders yep. um, separating Wiggins and, and and Schroeder. And that's just, it was cool to see. He's a player's coach, uh, and you could tell from just his opening practice that how excited some of the players were. Not because Tibbs was gone. That has nothing to do with it. It was just how excited they were that Ryan was getting an opportunity yeah, to totally. coach. totally. Happy for him to have that opportunity. I He was so fun to watch last night. I, I think there were a couple, I'm talking about Saunders, there were a couple of moments, I think, at the beginning where he was a little bit nervous. Um, but then, you know, once you get into the flow of the game, it's so clear he knows how to coach. And when he's, like, jumping out the livid at the end of that game, yeah, and because like, he called time that timeout yeah. when Tyus was traveling, I, like, saw him, like, jumping up and, like, getting mad at the refs. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, th- Like, just this is it. From now on, you know, yeah. that was the nerves. And he, you go he through had a to game get it like, out. You go through a game like last night, and you come out of that, and now it's like, all right, let's go to work. Like last night was the game where you get the nerves out, where the he calls that first play mm-hmm. that in honor of his father, um, which is so cool. It's really cool, and it's so cool that those guys on the NBA TV, uh, you know, Chris Webber, Kevin McHale, yeah. Isaiah Thomas, they were talking before were the game and yeah. they had like little side <laughs> bets on, on like, that. he's going to make this, you know, call this play. And, um, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. I don't know. There's so much, there's so much emotional narrative right now that I think what's almost oddly enough kind of being lost is what a good basketball mind Ryan Saunders is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you saw last night that he's 100% has the ability to lead the team emotionally. But from a schematic standpoint, I'm really excited to see what he's going to do because he's an analytics guy. He's, again, like a really smart basketball mind. He's been around the game his whole life. Um, it could be a really exciting – it's going to be an exciting couple of weeks as we just see what changes he's going to implement. They're going to be gradual. He's not going to drastically change the character no. of the and offense or the system. And I think that – thinking that the Wolves are going to look dramatically different in a couple of weeks is probably not the right way to approach this. I agree. But he is, you know, the, the 
head coach does have an impact on how these games looks and on the character of the team and on the system that is in play. And it'll be interesting to see what the Wolves under Ryan Saunders look like. Yeah, I think you're spot on. I think, I mean, he talked about that he wanted to be faster in pace. The team currently ranks, um, before last night's game, they ranked 13th in the league in pace. So they're already in the top, you know, top half of, of pace of play teams. But, um, you know, and, and fans are really excited about that on Twitter and whatnot. Um, and that's great. And, you know, maybe the people are wondering, well, is Dario going to play more? What are the rotations going to look like? They're not um, going to change too much. I don't, I don't think they're going to change drastically. We might see things, uh, you know, where he tries to you know, play guys more. But yeah, I think you're right. And, and he, he even said as much, right, where he said, I have ideas, sure, but you need time to implement them. And if we know anything about the NBA schedule, there's not a whole lot of practice time. Yeah. Um, and things just look different in your head. You never know how something's going to work when you actually put it on the court. So you have to take time and kind of work through some of those concepts. Yeah. Three things that I want to kind of uh, touch on that I thought were pretty cool. Two of them are players quotes. And, and one is something that Ryan told us uh, or told the media in Oklahoma City before uh, Tuesday shoot around. The first was that he sat down with every single player and talked yeah. about their role and how things might change or yep. might stay the same or what to expect. I thought that was really cool because, and he stressed this the whole time, and, and Scott Layden alluded to it as well, that what Ryan does better than most people. Anyone else. In yeah. general. Not, and again, if like if I'm a fan and whatever, stay away from the comparisons because, well, if you're saying this person does this well, that means the other person didn't. And it's not necessarily the case. But um, that Saunders can communicate. He is a great communicator, and that just doesn't go with basketball. That happens. It's the same thing we are talking about before. He can talk to anybody. Yep. If he walked by right now, he'd start a conversation with him, and he's very approachable, and uh, that stuck out to me. To sit down with every single player, you're you're sitting down with the guys that, no offense to Luol Dang, but he doesn't have to sit down and talk to Luol Dang right? right yeah. about how his role might change or what he expects out of him and blah, blah, blah. But I'm sure as a veteran like that, you appreciate – a coach or coming in. And it's just good to have the whole team on the same page. Like even the players who don't play a bunch, it's good to have clarity about roles. It's good to have clarity about where Ryan sees the team going. I just think it's just a good organizational principle to have that kind of top to bottom communication. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, two quotes I want to talk about. Uh, one is, and it goes to the communication thing, Andrew Wiggins, who 40 points in, oh my God. in, in 40 points, 10 rebounds, uh, best player on the court in Oklahoma city. So good Probably for the second straight game there. Uh, he goes, I've known Ryan for a long time now. He's the only coach who's been here since my rookie year. There's been a lot of changes, but I trust him. I have a good relationship with him. I think he's going to do great a great job, especially because you can talk to him and he's not much older than me. I think we're going to go in. I think we're going in the right direction. Uh, that, and, and the age thing is another thing where I think it's probably a little overrated because he's 32 and Wiggins is 22, so they're closer in age. Right. But 10 years is still. Yeah. yeah. Saunders has seen a lot more. I'm not in his hanging life. out. I'm, yeah. I'm not hanging out with a bunch of 18 year olds. Right. When yeah, sure. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I don't relate. That sounded disgusting, but I I, yes. I, I, I would sure would I relate to them better than. An eight year old, thirty, no. oh, thirty eight year old to an eight. You know what I mean? Yes, totally. Uh, I know. What went you're down saying a weird here. path. I know. What you're uh, the second quote from Taj Gibson last night, and if you haven't seen the uh, player reaction, oh, you got to watch that. Go to our uh, Timberwolves.com or, or go to the YouTube page. Uh, it's it's on on both of them. Shout out to Taylor. For yeah, Taylor Nardinger for getting in the locker room and getting it's, that moment. It, it, it's a good video. It's super cool. Uh, Carl's jacked. Um, Julian has a little blog up on it, but. I, I would go check that out, and I have a piece on um, kind of how the players seem almost seem like they're more excited uh, than Ryan was. And yeah, obviously right, for Ryan, yeah. it's a super emotional moment and, and, and whatever, but uh, it was just like super cool to see the players. They were j you, you can't fake that type of emotion. No, you can't. Um, quote from Taj Gibson. He goes, one thing that people don't understand about Ryan is he's such a great person. He's been one of those assistant coaches I could always talk and relate to. Tonight, you felt that when he was out in there on the court or just talking to him, he fed off our energy and we fed off his energy. We were just trying to get a win for him. Taj is such a great dude. Yeah. And yeah. that kind of says all you need to know about, um, you know, Ryan, Ryan's, uh, the, the respect people have for him and, and the respect he gives the players as well. And just the work that he puts in, um, you know, it, people don't like, I, I, for people that don't know, I mean, like 10 years ago or whenever it was, I haven't, I mean, I think it was a, right when he was out of college, he and a group of guys, they started a, an analytics company. Yeah. Right. Where uh -huh. uh, basketball and there's NBA teams that use this NCAA teams. So it's, 
he knows his stuff. Oh, he's yeah. not just the son of a coach that ha- happened to get the job because you know Flip was here. He knows his stuff. And the players don't just respect him because he's being nice to them. Yeah. You know, like it, otherwise they'd walk all otherwise, over. Otherwise, exactly, or not even necessarily walk all over him, but just like if you're going to be a head coach in the best basketball league in the world and be successful, you need to know a lot about basketball. And the players know a lot about basketball. So if you put someone at the helm who doesn't, they'll see right through that. And you would not be seeing the same support if 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 Ryan wasn't somebody who knew a ton about basketball. And and it's just it's so it, you know again like. There's this huge focus on all of these storylines, and they're great storylines. And I, I love them just as much as the next person. But you have to understand that to have this type of relationship with players, he's telling them things that are making them better. Mm-hmm. And they're seeing that the work he does with them it helps them improve and helps them win. And so that's also where this is coming from. Yes, it's the history, but it's also who Ryan is, you know? Yeah, and uh, we, we sat with the trade after after we got Covington and, and uh, Dario. There was a honeymoon period, and there's going to be some ups and downs. We're, we're not even halfway sure. through the season yet, so they're not going to win the rest of their games. Yeah, I think actually, I think we're right at the halfway point yep. in the season. But there's going to be some ups and downs. Uh, you know, there's going to be some questionable decisions he makes because um, that's how sports work. Yeah. There's there's always something that happens. But um, and just to, to clarify that he is the interim head coach. Nothing's guaranteed beyond this year. But I think I speak for. Um, pretty much everybody in the Timberwolves organization when I when I say that you know we're rooting for him and, and I think we hope that he eventually gets a job full time and he has a future yeah in the, in the no NBA. matter what Ryan Saunders is going to be a, a head coach in the NBA somewhere um, and you know we'd love it to be here but we'll see how that shakes out um, he'll get his next uh, opportunity to win a game on Friday against Luca will be really our fun. boy Luca I'm so excited and it's a Prince Friday. night I'm so excited for Friday Prince yeah. night Luca night. Saunders' first home game, I, th- I think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Um, Dirk, Dirk's last game at Target Center. Yeah. Maybe. Dang. We can't say that officially, I guess, because he yeah, hasn't really said anything. play him in the playoffs, too. But that's true. That's true. That Wow. What a wild. That would be crazy. What a wild. <laughs> what a wild matchup that would be. Wow. Um, yeah, actually. But, huh. yeah, so plenty of reasons to go to Target Center, Timberwolves.com slash tickets. Sales guys, give me some, give me some money for that. You got to... Uh, you got if you're in the cities, you gotta try and find a way to get started. I agree. Friday. And then the next it's night, gonna be the best show in town. If you can't make Friday night, the next night they play against the Pelicans, Anthony so, Davis. That'll be cool too. And probably a little bit of a revenge game because oh, yeah. they Wolves kind of got their butts kicked without Anthony Davis in New that Orleans. That was a tough game. Yeah, it was a bad. I don't game. talk about that. Um, we have Christian Leitner up next. Uh, he joined us. Uh, this podcast is from like January fourth or fifth. Uh, we've been through so much over the last week that we just haven't had time Aged. to put it out. But yeah. Um, I encourage you to. This is a fun podcast. It's really good. He talks about his he's re- a crazy guy. He is. <laughs> he's he, awesome. He's uh, he he's one of those guys that he pauses and in sentences because he's like it feels like he's thirty times smarter than you are. Yeah, he pauses and everyone like leans in. Yeah, it's like tell me more. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he talks about uh, playing for the Dream Team, nineteen ninety two. Obviously, what it was like to come into the league as a player that already accomplished a lot more than players in the league for 10 years have. We got Michael Jordan stories. We got Michael Jordan ping pong stories. David Stern. David Stern. Um, a lot of cameos. Yeah, it's fun. The second half of today's podcast. Yeah, fun time. Uh, thank you guys for listening. We hope you enjoy that part. Uh, yeah, it's it's good to be back. It Heck is. Yeah. It's great to really be back. excited. Thanks, guys. We are very excited for our guest uh, on the layup line today, Christian Leitner, man. Christian, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is actually we, we kind of talked on our way over in the in the in the Skyway. So you were here. When, when did that document that Thirty for Thirty come out? Long time ago, years <laughs> ago. It wasn't that long ago. I was here from '92 to '95 and a half. I don't even know. I think I think I played three full years here, and then a half a year. Um, when did the documentary come out? The Thirty for Thirty. Yeah, that was like four years ago. I think it was 2014, maybe. Mm-hmm. Because you did a media availability at uh, Wyzetta High School. Because you had a camp there. I remember that. Um, But so I was talking to Jeff Munich before this. Were you there? Did you come out to Wyzetta? I was there. I was there. I I have proof. You a picture? Well, do I have a picture? (laughs) Yeah. There we are. Oh, my God. That's awesome. For those of you who can't see. For those of you who can't see, it's a picture of me smiling and, and Christian annoyed at me. And that was one that <laughs> Munich set up at YZ. Mm-hmm. Because I've also done a camp, I think, at like Eden Prairie. 
where it's a huge school and they have so many kids there, they have to make up sports. So they have like <laughs> ping pong for a winter sport. Yeah. And ski jumping. And that's always shocking to me because my school is like 100 kids a class and YZ has got like a 1,000. I mean, Eden Prairie. And it's just growing so fast. And that's why I liked Stillwater when I lived out in Stillwater. It doesn't seem to be like the city's growing so much that way. But to the West, it's just crazy. Yeah, I could have used more made-up sports in high school for my <laughs> athletic challenge, challenges. Um, so be- before we get into some of the other stuff, you're going to be asked a million questions about your time in Minnesota and whatnot. So I want to kind of hit on some other stuff. Um, for the documentary, the 30 for 30, titled I Hate Christian Leitner, how did you convince your family that about that name? I didn't convince anybody. <laughs> ESPN came to me and said, this is the title, yeah. live, live with it or, or die. Um, <laughs> you chose life. And I chose, <laughs> chose life. life. Uh, now, they told me the title before I saw the movie, mm-hmm. Okay. So right away, you're not going to like the title. And um, I called my parents right away, and my dad didn't like it. But my mother is very, very, very smart, much more intelligent than me and maybe other people in my family. So right away, she was like, it's okay, don't worry about it. And that's because she is smart enough to realize that it might be, uh, it might have happened because it's a provocative title. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't think that that far ahead. Um she might have realized that, hey, by the end of the movie, even though none of us saw it, she she might have realized that, hey, maybe by the end of the movie, they're going to make you look pretty nice, yeah. <laughs> pretty you know normal. So when I first called my parents, like 10 minutes after ESPN called me, you know, I'm a little upset. My dad's a little upset. And my mother's like, don't worry about it. So I listened to her and I didn't worry about it. And then like maybe two weeks later, they brought me in to watch the film. And which I, once I saw the film and I realized how it just goes from step to step to step, you know, villain, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And then by the end, even the people that are saying I'm a villain are saying, yeah, but Duke's awesome. And, and Leitner was kind of awesome or something like that. <laughs> um, by the end of the movie... I loved it. I loved the movie. I loved every second of the movie. I cried in certain parts. I I got emotional at certain parts. And then I realized that the title really doesn't mean much. Mm -hmm. And it's just a provocative thing to draw people in. Because when ESPN makes a movie, they don't want just Duke lovers to watch the show. Do you understand? Yeah. Because that's only like maybe a nation of 60 to 80,000. And they want... Even Duke haters or, and Leitner haters to watch the movie. So that's all the Kentucky fans, all the Carolina, c- c- everyone we ever right. played. So that provocative title brought everyone in. And that's why it's a very well received 30 for 30. And I love it. And I have to force myself not to watch it. I was telling Tom, Tom earlier that I have to force myself not to watch it because it brings so many fond memories. I get. So happy the entire time. Um, my head grows a little too big, maybe if I watch it too often. But I, I, have, to, I have to show my son it, you know, once a year. Yeah. Um, and then my poor mother, rest her soul, she passed away a year ago, so I'm able to see her on on the film and and hear her voice a little bit. So that's very enjoyable. But I just love everything about it, and I don't even mind the title anymore. Yeah. Uh, you were part of the 1992 Dream Team. Uh, I was looking in so the 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 famous scrimmage right where um, you know everybody talks about it and they found some film and they actually put together a box score and I you had ten points I did okay in yeah the, in the in the greatest scrimmage of all time it was so easy for me on the dream team all I had to do was run around and keep my hands up you know and no one worried about me because they're worried about the other nine legends that are on the court so. Um, it was a case of no one paying attention to me, and I just had to catch the ball and lay it in. So uh, it was a lot of fun, very enjoyable. Um, that scrimmage was awesome, that one scrimmage in Monaco when they let us really, really go at each other because most of the time, Daly was kind of like holding us back. You know, Daly was saying, don't go too hard. We're not going to go too long. We don't want anyone to get hurt so we can go to the Olympics and do what we're supposed to do, which is – you know, win every game by 30 and show the world, blah, blah, blah. So he was always holding us back, even though the guys, the guys on the team, they're 
basketball players who love it. They wanted to play every day as hard as they could, you know. So that scrimmage was awesome. And I think the story is, you know, that Jordan said, you know, we don't want the college kids, so you guys take them. And that's all funny stuff, and that's all, you know, enjoyable to read. But that's a memory that I'll never forget. Yeah, that was, that was fun to look up. Um, I want to, you talked about ping pong earlier. I want to talk about playing ping pong um, during that stretch on the Dream Team. Uh, you couldn't be beaten. Well, when I was here for the Timberwolves, I used to have a 600-gallon shark tank in my house with a, about a three-foot nurse shark in it. And uh, at the end of one season, I brought, brought the fellows over, the whole team. And, um, <laughs> and the tank's about as big as this room, pretty much. And so, like, all 12 or 15 guys are standing around the tank, and I throw a goldfish, a big goldfish, probably about the size of your hand in there, and the shark just devours it, and everyone loved it. I'll never forget how Marlon Maxey was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. So... <laughs> And then in my house also I had a ping pong table and I played some ping pong with the guys on the on the T Wolves team and I might have been the champ you know on that team too but uh, ping pong is a big part of my life I grew up playing it against my brother and my father when I was young and they used to kick my behind for a long time so I got very good at it and then um, yes in '92 when I was on the dream team a lot of basketball players love ping pong it's a game that requires hand and eye speed, hand and eye coordination, very, uh, you have to be unbelievably quick. Um, I think every basketball player I know loves playing ping pong. So everyone played it on the dream team. I played Clyde Drexler and Chris Mullen and even David Stern. Once David Stern saw, saw I was pretty good. So I played against, you know, Stern, like the biggest name in the NBA, except for maybe Jordan. And then Jordan wanted a piece of me, too, and I beat him the first time. And then, now I didn't know this, but over the years I've learned this story. And I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is true because I didn't see it. But I beat him, like, on a Tuesday night in the family room, okay? So at the hotel in Barcelona. At the hotel in Barcelona they had a big family room, just like you guys had for the Timberwolves. And then off that room there was a ping pong table. And I played everyone, and then Jordan and I finally played. I beat him that first night. And I've heard over the last 25 years that he had a ping pong table brought up to his room <laughs> so he could practice a little bit. <laughs> Did you guys ever hear that? No. Like, not everyone knows that, but I just read something, like, maybe a month ago or saw some documentary where I swear, like, one of the NBA security guys who had to travel with us to protect, you know, those guys, he said that Jordan snuck a ping pong table up in his hotel room so he could practice and play me again but I still beat him the next time but I don't know if that story is true but it might be true because that's just how Michael is he doesn't like to lose to anybody and they definitely doesn't want to lose to a younger dookie was it and when you're playing him what was what was your emotional state like knowing that because he's so competitive and you're a I was guy. just trying to remain calm the the big thing is the, and maybe Maybe people can learn learn about how to handle stressful situations. But when you're in a stressful situation like that as an athlete, you just have to try to remain calm and realize and force yourself to act like this is normal, everyday occurrence. And even though I'm playing Jordan and he's really trying to beat me, I'm going to hit my normal shots. And when you have a an end of the buzzer shot in, in a game, in a big game, just act like it's a regular old shot that you're taking, you know, in practice. So... Yes, my emotional state was, geez, I know this is Michael Jordan, and I know he wants to beat me, and everyone's watching. Everyone was watching. Yeah. Stern was over here. Clyde was over here, you know. So it, it's just so much fun, and you just try to remain calm and hope and laugh and hope that you beat him and laugh a little when you beat him. But it's awesome to see that right away he wanted to play me again and, and the next day because I'm exactly like that too. If, I love playing against people who are going to beat me at stuff because if they beat me, then I'm going to get better and I'm going to come back and I want to play them again the next day. And, you know, a lot of athletes are like that. So to see that firsthand from Jordan, then you learn that, hey, some of the stories are true and he he just he doesn't like to lose. What was he like during during the games? During the Dream Team situation, he was awesome to me. He yeah. he, he teased me a little the first day just to let me know that, you know, he, 
that he's Tar Heel and I'm a Dookie, and everyone knows that we have to have that, you know, that type of relationship anyway. But after that, he was great. Um, they were all a little not judgmental until the first practice. So, like, we might might have got together on a Wednesday night in La Jolla, right, and we had dinner. And they were nice and social and, you know, said hello, but I didn't feel like overly warmth. Like coming, part of the group, yeah. You know, not yet. But then on Thursday, the next day, we had our first practice. And right after the first practice, then I did feel like part of the group because they banged me around and they elbowed me and they saw that I didn't cry. And when they said, get us our coffee and donuts, I didn't complain about it. So they could see that I wanted to be part of the team, part of the group. They put me through some challenges in the first practice. And then from then on, it was just all acceptance and love and you're part of the group and let's enjoy the ride. When you first came into the league, you were, you know, two-time uh, NCAA champion, four-time All-American, uh, gold medal. I mean, you had more basketball accolades than most people in the league did. Um, what was that like coming into the league and kind of what was what was the reaction from maybe some of your teammates? And I, I just, I feel like that, that might be a difficult transition. It was not a difficult transition. It was um, a challenging transition because mm-hmm. everyone wanted to beat you and test you. And and like I just told you, I enjoy stuff like that. I enjoy playing against people that want to beat me, that want to challenge me. And that's the fun of competing. So you asked what it was like, and what it was like is it was awesome. And I loved every second of it. And and if Charles Oakley wanted to bang me harder because I was on the dream team and, and I, someone wasn't, you know, that's fine. When you're an athlete, you like stuff like that. So um, now my teammates here, the, the reception was awesome. And Felton Spencer was here. And I think Luke Longley was here my first year and Doug West. And it was just awesome. And they seemed to be happy to have me. And, and I was happy to be here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, man. We appreciate it. Uh, go fishing this weekend. I'm sure you will. Um, well, not this weekend. It's uh, winter time, so I'm not going to go ice fishing. I'm not huge on, huge on ice fishing yet, but I am up here all summer long driving up to the Lake of the Woods to go musky fishing. But I think I'm going to do my first real big ice fishing trip this winter. Um, at the end of February, I'm going to come up, back up and drive to the Lake of the Woods and ice fish up there. I have been ice fishing maybe two or three times, one time out in Stillwater when I lived out there. Um, but it's a little colder, and I have, still have to get used to that. Uh, my dad, his uh, job during the winter is ice fishing, which my stepmom <laughs> loves because it's not actually a job. He just convinces it, us that it is. Uh, do you have any camps coming up or anything um, in, in the I near future? I don't have any camps coming up in the Minneapolis or the Minnesota area right now. I just had a holiday camp in um, Appleton, Wisconsin, which was awesome. So I spent Christmas with my family down in Jacksonville, flew up to Appleton real quick for a two-day camp, and I had 188 kids work out with me those two days. And I'm always up here doing camps with the Timberwolves at YZ High School without the Timberwolves through my own organization. Like, I've been to Eden Prairie High School, and I love doing it. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy that, you know, the Timberwolves organization and John Thomas and everyone who started thinking about, hey, let's get our old players back together. It's an awesome idea, and I'm super excited to be a part of it. And I haven't been to a game in a long time. I think the last time I was in the arena was for a Smashing Pumpkins concert, which, <laughs> which was awesome too. And then before that, the last thing I did downtown Minneapolis was the Pumpkins concert that was outside, like right where the Mayo Clinic is right now. Yeah. So do you guys, you guys are probably too young, <laughs> but they had a concert like on the street and I stood up on someone's roof and we watched the concert from up there. So it was just awesome. But everything looks great. The new arena, the everything's what a year old in the arena. Yeah. It looks mm-hmm. awesome. And mm-hmm. then the new practice facility is just mind boggling. Yeah, no, it is a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, fellas. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. You got a busy day. We'll talk to you soon. What a guy. What a guy. Christian Leitner. What a guy. He's going musky fishing. Also, I didn't know he didn't go ice fishing. Yeah. So that's, I felt like an idiot. Well, how are you supposed to know if Christian Leitner goes ice fishing? I don't know. That's kind of an obscure. They don't have that on basketball reference. That's not. No, they don't. 
they don't. Uh, but thank you guys for listening so much. We appreciate it. Um, we'll be back next week. We don't have a guest yet. Um, we can probably get one. We probably will get one. Probably will I'm be sure. the best guest. Yet. Um, but uh, we, we, we really appreciate it. And hopefully 2019, you guys keep listening and we keep building this because this is so much fun to do. And I think we've had so many good guests and um, just banter. And we, we want to get back to more of the you know weekly just talking about the wolf stuff too. But um, it's been quite the quite the year yeah, so far. It's so. only we're only only going up. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>